All right, let's see if I'm actually recording this time. I just shot like 20 minutes of me talking to the camera, really pouring my heart out. None of it got on camera! So I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. And let's move forward, shall we? First question some of y'all may have is, yes, I do own all this behind me. Yes, I do live here. And yes, I am leaving all this in a matter of weeks. And yes, I am crazy. Thanks for asking. 2015 could very well have been the most difficult year of my life. It was the year that started at the end of last year when my dad passed away. I could have reacted to my dad's passing in many different ways. Was I sad? Am I still sad? Of course. He was my best friend. But I could have reacted in many different ways. I could have I could have given up. I could have curled up in a big ball and turtled up. I didn't do that. I was never in the plans. Because I knew I had big things planned for this year. And boy, did it deliver. So today's video is going to be a 2015 year in review. I'm going to hit some of the high points. I'm not going to talk about everything, but I'm going to hit some of the high points and just to really to prove that anything can happen. That if you keep your eye on the prize, if you keep looking forward, if you keep moving forward, anything can happen. I'm living proof of that. Hello, Ryan Hall, have we met? In January, I met some amazing people. January really could have been a dark month for me, and in many ways it was. But I met some amazing people. I've been working with a life coach for a couple of years now, as a lot of you guys probably know by now. And I been working in a group setting with a few of them, uh, with a few uh, clients, and this isn't just a coaching group. These people really became like family to me. These people really became like family to me. They're from all over the country, in different countries, actually. We've got a couple from Canada, and I, I, I've really grown to really see these people as just an invaluable source of support and love and just it's that they're an amazing group of people and I would not be where I am today if I had not met these people I came to this group at a really really dark time in my life and I'm leaving this group truly the strongest and most capable that I've ever been in my life. So, <sighs> Team Dope, you know who you are. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I had been saying for years that L.A. was going to be the place that I was going to try to make a living. That L.A. was going to be the place where I tried to, where I tried to make it happen. And in the long term, it still might be. But I took my first trip out to Southern California in May and really had a magical time. I saw some amazing things. I got a roll tide on Sunset Boulevard, which was a thrill. I got to I got to hang out with one of my oldest friends. And when I say one of my oldest friends, I've known this guy since third grade, I believe. Hadn't seen him in probably 15, 18 years, probably. We kind of drifted apart after high school, unfortunately. But it was really a terrific time. I, I learned a lot about myself on that trip. I learned that I'm capable of thinking outside the box. I learned that 
I can make stuff happen when stuff doesn't go my way. That was the trip that I lost my driver's license in the Atlanta airport and I had a total conniption for two days. Anyway, I've got a goal for next summer to take another trip out to Los Angeles just as a vacation, not as like a house hunting thing and just really experience Los Angeles properly. I've got more friends that live out there now, so that's a good thing. So that's, a, that's for next summer. Staying in 2015, let's flash forward to July the 8th. I had just finished up with a coaching call like five minutes before when Pete started barking. But why Pete was barking was because the the UPS guy dropped off a package. This package was a proof copy of Written in the Stone. That, I have to say, was the most joyful experience of my life. I wish I could have experienced it with people, <laughs> but it was the most joyful experience of my life. I cried tears of joy for two hours. I'm not exaggerating. That was the most amazing thing I think that has ever happened. And then three weeks later on July 23rd, written in the stone, a lifelong dream come true. became available for sale on my website, ryanhallwrites.com, as well as on a little up-and-coming website called amazon.com. Let's skip forward to the following month. August 20th, I landed in New York City for the very first time. Little did I know that that little town would take my heart. Sounded like a Frank Sinatra lyric. I met some amazing people, hung out with some amazing people. I had one of the best meals I think I've ever had in my life. I got to see a, a one-man show from really one of my heroes, the great WWE wrestling announcer, Jim Ross. Some of the most ribald and amazing stories you'll ever hear. That little town took my heart. And it's going to have me permanently here very soon. Then the following month was when college football season started. Now, I know college football is a relatively unimportant thing in the scheme of life, in the scheme of recovery, in the scheme of... No, it's not. More than anything, I think sports can help you heal a broken heart. Sports can help you heal the wounds of a broken heart. See, my dad and I, Bambo football was our thing. Bambo football was our thing. And he would have loved this scene. He really would have loved this team. Smash Mouth. Defense first. Derek, he would have fallen in love with Derrick Henry, as I think I have. Just the amazing young man that he is. And no matter what happens in a few weeks in the playoffs, no matter what happens against Michigan State next week, This season has gone so far to helping me heal, to helping me really find who I am again. And on behalf of the Church of the Crimson, I can't thank him enough. I really can't. And then finally, we come to today. What will 2016 hold? What will the rest of my life hold? Lord only knows. 
literally, Lord only knows. But I do know this, I'm stronger I'm more resilient and I'm more determined than ever to set the world on fire just to watch it burn. Metaphorically speaking, of course.